Most of the time I talk about investing over the long term, where it makes sense to put as much as you can into equity and simply leave it there. However, not everybody is a long-term investor. What if you're saving for your children's education or perhaps for a house deposit? The horizon there could be much shorter, maybe between 3 and 10 years. So in this video, we'll develop guiding principles for how to build those medium-term portfolios. Now, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you enjoy our content. And now let's look at medium-term investing in a bit more detail. This is what returns look like over a really long period of time, since 1871 in fact. And here you can see the comparison between the S&P 500, treasuries, gold and inflation. Now the absolute winner is the S&P 500. That's had a return of 9% versus about 5% for treasuries, 3% for gold and inflation over that period was about 2% in the US. So you can see that over the long term, if you can ignore volatility, which you can for long periods of time, then it really makes sense to put as much as you can into equity. Now, a really nice illustration of the risk return trade off in investment is shown here with the UK life strategy funds. These are offered by Vanguard and they gradually dial up the risk from 20% equity through 40% equity all the way up to 100% equity. So as you decrease the amount of bonds and increase the amount of equity, you can see that the volatility increases. That's the measure of risk we're using here. So we're moving to the right on the graph as we dial up that risk. But at the same time, we're increasing the return. So we're also moving up on the y-axis. So if you are going to be investing for a long period of time, you'd certainly tend to move towards the higher equity portfolios. Whereas in this video, we're going to focus on dialing down that risk and we'll be moving towards these less volatile investments, which are less likely to make a loss over a short period of time. The reason why we're dialing down the risk is that over the shorter term, investments are less predictable. So my approach in this video has been to use Monte Carlo simulation where I simulate multiple potential future paths for any investment and I do that thousands of times and then I look to see how many of those future paths end up with an investment that's worth less than it is to start with. So in this example, I simulate Life Strategy 20 in this top graph 10,000 times over a three year period and then I simply count how many of those potential paths ended up with less money than they started. And that's what you can see with this dashed red line. If we're to the right of that red line, then we end up with more than a thousand, which is our initial investment. And that happened 95% of the time over a three year period for Life Strategy 20. And that's the least risky of the five funds. As we dial up the risk, notice what happens is that the general shape of the distribution gets broader. In other words, our uncertainty about the outcome increases. And critically, the percentage of time when the return is negative over that three year period increases, such that for Life Strategy 100, which is all equity, it happens 12% of the time that we end up with less than we started. Now, if that's the deposit for your house, you're really in trouble. And this is why we have to dial down the risk over shorter periods of time to reduce that uncertainty and reduce the risk of loss. And so if we're investing over the medium term, what is it about an investment that matters? The key thing to understand is that there are three components to the total return of any investment. The first one, which was really dominant in that long term graph that we started with, is price drift. As the profits of companies increase over time, gradually that increases the price of the S&P 500, say. And over very long periods of time, that drift is completely dominant. Another positive component is income. So if you buy a stock, some of them will pay you a dividend. And that dividend is always positive. It always adds to your return. So again, this is going to help you both over the medium term and the long term. The component which is your enemy is volatility. That's the random fluctuations in price which you get day to day. Now over the long term, you can essentially ignore volatility as it becomes less dominant in your return. Drift dominates. However, over the shorter term, what you see is that volatility dominates. So over a one day period or even a one year period, volatility will really strongly determine your return. So if we are going to be investing over the medium term, we'll try and maximize the first two positive components to return and minimize the third component, which is volatility. 
Before we move on to our three guiding principles for medium-term investment, let me just quickly mention our membership on pensioncraft.com where you get access to lots of goodies, such as a growing library of members-only content, plus access to Slack so you can ask a question whenever you like. If you want to learn more about that, just click on the link beside me or in the description beneath me. So what are our three principles? The first one is about minimizing volatility. So here I've compared two potential investments over a three-year horizon. The first one is a money market fund. These are pretty much the safest investments of all. They invest in fixed income assets, but these are even safe by fixed income standards. So these will have very short duration. So the price fluctuations will be tiny. There may also be some things like commercial paper, but again, the duration is very short and the credit quality is very high. So the risk of loss is absolutely tiny. And that's reflected in the returns. You can see that for our thousand pound investment, we're almost always to the right of the dashed red line. We almost always end up with more money than we started with. Now, of course, there's not much upside. We're not gonna get much return for very little risk, but because we've paid that price in return, our risk is extremely low. The chance of ending up with less than we started with is just 0.4%. Whereas if we have even a government bond issued by the UK government, a GILT as it's called, and here I'm using the iShares UK GILTS All Stocks Index Fund as an example, where the duration is 11 years. And duration is a measure of risk for fixed income where it tells you the volatility of the fund. The longer the duration, the greater the volatility such that for this fund with a duration of 11 years, there's a roughly one in four chance we'll make a loss over a three year period. So even in fixed income, it's key to keep your volatility low. Our second principle is to do with currency. Now let's say you bought something really safe, but it's denominated in a foreign currency, such as US dollars for a UK investor. And in this case, I've used the example of a US aggregate bond fund. So this is a diversified US portfolio of bonds. Now the top panel shows you the returns you'd receive in US dollars if you were a US investor. And here the probability of loss over a three year period is just 9%. Whereas once we convert it into sterling, notice how the distribution is much wider. It's much more uncertain. And that's because of the effect on the sterling to dollar conversion rate. That's added volatility to our investment such that it's tripled our chance of making a loss over this three year period. Now on the upside, it's also increased our chances of making a reasonably good return. That's what happens if sterling weakens versus the dollar. But if sterling strengthens versus the dollar, it's increased our downside. And that's not something we can stomach over a short investment horizon. So our second principle is don't take currency risk. Buy a hedged version of a fund or buy things which are safe but denominated in your domestic currency. Our third principle is a little bit surprising, I think, and it looks at the effect of reinvestment of income. So in the top panel, we've got an income fund, and in the bottom panel, we've got the same stocks, but it's an accumulation version of the fund. And the fund we've used is this Vanguard Pacific X Japan fund. Now that has a lot of Australian stocks in it, which tend to have very high dividends. So a large proportion of the return for this fund comes from income in the form of dividends. Notice how the two distributions look very similar in shape. The uncertainty is very similar. But what happens is when we reinvest the dividends is that the whole distribution gets picked up and moved to the right. And that means the probability of making a loss halves. Now, of course, you could just take the income payments from the income version of the fund and reinvest them. But what this stresses is the importance of that process and the reinvestment of dividend. Because dividends are always positive and their net effect is to increase that upward drift. And that helps us in order to reduce our risk of loss. Another way to think of that is that if there is volatility, it has to now combat that income effect, which is always positive. Another thing we can do with this Monte Carlo approach is look at how many years we'd have to invest to reduce the chance of loss to just 1%. Now, in the case of those life strategy funds, you can see that for life strategy 20, it would take seven years for that probability to fall below 1%. Whereas for life strategy 100, which is much riskier, it has a lot more equity in it, it would take almost twice as long. So if you do want to guarantee a gain, then you have to wait for a very long time with equity because it's so volatile. And the same would be true, say, of a commodity. 
like gold. Essentially what you're doing is playing off that drift versus the volatility. So in order to shorten this time, you choose something with low volatility and a high return. And if we do the same thing for the S&P 500 and for the NASDAQ 100, the time periods are even longer. But it is really very sensitive to the period of time over which you base your simulation. These numbers would be much smaller if we chose a period of very high return. In conclusion then, the most important principle is keeping your investments safe. That means low volatility. Equity is not going to work. Commodities won't work. Long duration government bonds won't work. It really has to be the safest of the safe. And if you want to be super safe, then it's cash. And if you want to take a little bit more risk, maybe something like a money market fund. As a consequence of that, you will sacrifice return because low risk does mean low return. Now, if your low risk investment generates income, all the better, because that's always positive. And for a slightly longer horizon, if you have got equity, then certainly having a high income version of equity helps. And then finally, if you are going for safe assets over a shorter horizon, then currency hedging really helps because currency adds additional volatility without necessarily adding more return. So hopefully that's given you some ideas if you do have one of those medium term investment horizons. There's really not much you can do to work around this risk reward trade off, particularly over these short periods of time. Now, don't forget our offer. You can get membership of Pension Craft and you can learn more about that by clicking on the link beside me and in the description beneath me. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you enjoy our content. And as always, thank you for listening.